today we're doing minestrone. Now the reason we're doing minestrone is not because you needed to see how another soup was made, but because I wanted to show you how to use Parmesan rind. So we'll get to that in a minute. I'm gonna get the, go ahead and get it started. I've got three tablespoons of a nice olive oil here and a cup of chopped onions. And we're gonna let these things uh, cook along with a couple of other ingredients for about three to four minutes. We've also got two cups of diced carrots and two cups of chopped celery or diced celery. Now these ingredients are often used together in Italian food. We wanna cook them fairly slow. We don't want them to brown, but we want them to uh, start to become trans the onion transparent uh, and uh, soften up a little bit. There's a lot more cooking going on later on and a lot more ingredients. Uh, but while that gets started a little bit, Look over here at the Parmesan rind that uh, we were able to bring home when we were in Italy. You can see that it's got some cheese on it, um, but not enough that you can really get to. But there's a lot of flavor in here, and you can get a lot of that flavor in there uh, simply by using about an inch, maybe a finger width side, uh, something along that size, uh, putting that in the pot. These you can keep, I mean, yours may not be this big as you grate the Parmesan off the, the chunk that you have purchased at your cheesemonger or your market. Um, but put them in the freezer and when you have enough, you can either make a broth out of the Parmesan. It pulls that flavor out. There's a little bit of umami flavor that's coming out with that as well because there's some protein in there. There's also salt in there. So we're gonna add a little bit of salt to this, but we're gonna wait and adjust seasoning at the end, which is something we should always do anyway. Uh, so these are, to me, uh, almost priceless, not because I brought it home with me when we were in Italy, but because there's so many things you can do with it. Instead of adding it to this, as I said, you can make a broth out of just this uh, and then store that in your freezer and pull it out when you're making something like this so that if you don't have a rind, uh, you can still get all that flavor in there. It gives a whole different dimension to it. And as the rind, it doesn't clump and melt in the same way that it would if you grated some cheese or just threw a piece of cheese in there uh, because the rind is tougher and not able to dissolve as quickly. So we'll go ahead and let this continue to cook down for a couple of more minutes and then we'll come back and add a few more ingredients. Next thing we're gonna add here is some garlic. Now this is four table or four cloves of garlic, which would equal about four teaspoons of garlic if you buy the, the convenience version that's already chopped up for you. Um, I tend to uh, look for recipes for uh, our segments that don't have tons and tons of ingredients on them. But once in a while, you're gonna find something that you just need to uh, do a little bit more for. So I've looked for a couple of spots where we can add some convenience to it, because as you can see, I have a lot of ingredients here, and there's a few more that are still uh, hanging over on the side. So if you wanted to use the chopped garlic, that would be one thing you could do to make this recipe work a little bit better. Adding the garlic, letting it cook for no longer than a minute, and then we're gonna start adding the other ingredients to it. Now this is two cups of chopped or diced zucchini. I tried to get it all fairly close to the same size, uh, so that's gonna go in here. Uh, it's more uh, consistency of how you like it. You probably have a recipe for uh, minestrone uh, that you could rely on. Uh, this is just one, as I said, that we're using to demonstrate another, another principle. These are cut green beans. Depending on the season, you could use fresh. Uh, I'm using frozen. Again, another way that we can add a little bit of convenience to uh, this process. Also going in here, I've got a half a teaspoon of salt. And I use kosher salt. Again, remember we can adjust the seasoning later on and you should adjust the seasoning later on, but you can't take the seasoning out once it's in. So add smaller amounts and then increase. I'm also adding a half a teaspoon of pepper a teaspoon of paprika, and here you can make changes uh, with the recipe based on the kind of paprika, whether you got one that was really hot or smoky. Uh, and then I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of rosemary. Now I'm using dried rosemary here, but I'm gonna crush it up a little bit, uh, partly because I don't like big things poking at me when I try to eat it, and these don't soften up completely. But also it helps release the flavor, and that's the primary reason. So uh, crushing it up a little bit, uh, you could use a mortar and pestle and do it e even more finely. I don't really think that's necessary here. So I'm just gonna stir those in together. And then I've got, again, using some of the convenience. This is a commercial uh, container of small diced tomatoes or petite diced. You could use crushed tomatoes or you could use whole tomatoes and crush them yourself uh, as you go through this. Now the, the 
interesting thing about using commercial is that the containers keep getting smaller. Um, price stays pretty much the same, but uh, these used to be a 16 ounce container, then they were 15 ounce container, and now they're down to, uh, I think it's uh, 14 and a half ounces. So uh, if you're using your own home cans, just use a pint. I've got two to three sprigs of thyme. I'm adding a bay leaf, and I've got six cups of, I'm using a reduced salt um, commercial uh, chicken broth. You could use a, a homemade one. Again, it's just six cups. You could use a different kind of broth if you chose. You could use a vegetable broth if you were trying to um, go closer to a, a vegetarian uh, recipe. Now, the thing we're going to add at this point uh, is our Parmesan. So you can see I've just got a little chunk. I want to add it as this chunk, not grate it up. Uh, and you have options once you put that in there. It's not going to uh, dissolve in here in all probability. You're going to, it's going to be retained. So there's some things you're going to want to take back out before you serve. Uh, one would be the bay leaf. Uh, the next one, uh, the leaves are probably going to fall off the thyme, but you're going to have to find the thyme sprigs that you put in. So it's a good idea to remember how many you put in in the first place. And then that cheese. Uh, you don't have to take the cheese out. It's going to not dissolve. It's probably going to stay in a chunk. It becomes chewy, but it's edible. So depending on the occasion, uh, if you're having people in for a more formal event, you may want to t take it out. Uh, if it's just family, you may want to leave it in there and uh, share it uh, as part of the meal. It doesn't look all that attractive when it's done, but it's really, really good. So uh, we're going to leave those. Uh, we're going to bring this up to uh, a, a boil, then reduce it to a simmer, and let it go about 20 minutes. Now, you may think that because we have so many ingredients that this has taken a lot of time, but this has only been cooking for, oh, probably about 25 minutes. So by the time you get to that point, uh, it doesn't take very long, and you can do a lot of uh, that preparation ahead. Now, I'm going to leave these in for a little bit longer, but you can see that most of the leaves have, are uh, falling off or have added their flavor to the soup as far as the thyme is concerned. I've got a can of uh, kidney beans, or you could use... Uh, two cups of cooked kidney beans that you have cooked ahead of time and put into the freezer or you've got them left from earlier in the week. Uh, and I'm using a dark red kidney bean because I think it adds uh, more color. Uh, you could use other kinds of beans as well. Uh, kidney beans are, are fairly traditional, but dark red, again, this is uh, an homage to minestrone, not necessarily the traditional version, but this works very well and it, it's a starting point for you. So those are going to cook about five minutes just so they get uh, well heated through and some of the flavors uh, penetrate into them a little bit. The kidney beans also add a really great texture when you're eating the soup. Surprisingly, with things that have cooked for a long time, we've got a lot of interesting textures. The beans are a little bit chewy. Uh, we have still, well, because we've not cooked it for hours and hours, we'll still have some uh, texture being given from the, the carrots and the, and the celery, uh, and then we're going to add some pasta in a little bit, which gives you a little bit more of a slippery texture in there. So it, it's a lot of uh, flavor, a lot of interest in this soup, even though it's fairly quick. Three more ingredients we're going to add. I have about a half a cup or a little bit more of chopped parsley, and I used, uh, it's fresh parsley, I used the Italian uh, flat parsley, flat leaf parsley, and then the same amount of fresh basil. And if you don't happen to have fresh basil, maybe the season is wrong or uh, it's not available at your market or it just doesn't look good, you could use dried basil but add that earlier on uh, and uh, in oh, probably maybe a tablespoon and add it when you added the rosemary later on so you had time to uh, get the flavor out of it. And then also I'm going to add two cups of cooked pasta. Now, some recipes for minestrone add the pasta and let it cook as it goes. This one uh, is, again, one of those things where you could already have that done. This just needs to be heated through since it's already cooked. So by the time you get it stirred in, it's pretty much, uh, you're pretty much ready to serve the soup uh, at this point in time. Uh, what we have here is minestrone. We have a great amount of flavor that we've pulled out of the rind of the Parmesan cheese. So I hope you'll give this a try. I'm going to add a little bit more Parmesan to it as a, as a garnish. And you would probably want to serve this with some crusty bread. Uh, I hope you'll give this one a try. It's a very simple uh, minestrone uh, for Oklahoma Gardening. I'm Barbara Brown.
hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.